Good morning, Bobber Nation. It's Jim Bobbington. It's a glorious, low 60 degree morning here in Colorado. And it's gonna rain later today, so I figured I gotta get out there. I think it's only been a couple weeks since I recorded on a ride. That feels like forever. So here we are. If you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I appreciate you. Please give me a subscribe. That's how I really know you love me and you appreciate what I do. But here we are today. What I am going to be talking about is something that kind of bothers me that a lot of people do. And that is loading up on new parts and mods before they get familiar with their bike. So of course there's some things that are, yeah, go for it. Upgrade that before you get your bike and understand how it works. But there's a lot of things that I think are uh, a waste of money. So we're gonna discuss that after my little intro here. Be right back. Welcome back. So yeah, something I see a lot of people do is they load up on Indian OEM upgrades uh, when they build their motorcycle on the website. Um, now, if you're not new to the cruiser community, uh, you may very well be familiar with what you like and what you need on this style of motorcycle. But if you are new to the Indian Scout line, if you've never ridden a cruiser before, I say don't waste your money until you get your motorcycle, get familiar with how it's set up from the factory, bare bones, and start upgrading things one at a time. Everybody knows you're going to want to upgrade your seat, um, but still, I see time and time again people who upgraded to the OEM comfort seat, which is what three or four hundred bucks, and they still don't like it. So they wasted that extra money. Another problem with adding on factory parts during your build is you don't get those original parts to keep. So if you go throwing on mini apes and comfort seat and all these other parts, they just take off. You, you don't get those original handlebars to keep. Uh, you don't get the original seat to keep and possibly sell down the road. There are actually people out there looking for OEM replacement parts, uh, and you could be helping them out by offering them your stock parts. You could also recoup a lot of that cost by putting those OEM parts back on when you sell your motorcycle, if you ever sell your motorcycle, and things like that. But a seat is just one of those things 
things that I think you should just deal with what comes with the bike, save your $400, get a Saddleman or a Corbin or something that you know will actually be comfortable. I don't really suggest either of those. Those are very popular. I would go with uh, Alex Leathercraft seat uh, if I were going for function and comfort. But I cannot let go of this 1920 seat because it is, it is the most badass looking seat you can get for these motorcycles in my opinion. Um, sure, there's things that I think you should upgrade without needing to get familiar with your motorcycle. For instance, the headlight. So there are very cheap options to get you some noise and look better and balance the bike better, like GP Shorties. I've got a video where I discuss how I believe the GP Shorties are the best bang for your buck exhaust you could possibly get. A lot of people complain about that video because I don't show the exhaust in it. It was snowing. I was sitting in my upstairs office. I wanted to make a video. I have other videos where you can hear the GP shorts. And yes, I do not regret that purchase. I had those in my garage before I even received the motorcycle. Hello, buddy. Nice bike. Um, I think there's other ones that are pretty cheap. Uh, maybe some Dean Speed Rampages. Um, but time and time again, I see these people who didn't do much research, they haven't ridden their bike a whole lot, and they go out and buy $700 slip-ons and immediately say, oh, these are too loud, oh, these are too quiet, uh, I want something else. So there you go again, wasting money, time, and effort on something that you didn't know you would like. Um, Crash bars. Yeah, order some crash bars. If you are worried about dropping your motorcycle because you're a beginner motorcyclist, go ahead and get some crash bars. They are very functional and they do what they're intended to do. It's not something uh, that you're probably going to regret doing. It 
it's not like there's a ton of options for, for crash bars or uh, frame sliders. I don't know what you want to call it. Team Speed, once again, is another good option for those. Um, but any of the OEM stuff that you can build your motorcycle out with on the website, I would say is a waste of money. They are overpriced. Nine times out of ten, there's a better, cooler looking aftermarket option that um, is probably cheaper even. Most people get mini apes in their build and still it's not baby enough for them and they still want something taller so there you go just wasting a couple hundred bucks adding on to the price of your motorcycle for no reason and you're gonna probably go another route eventually anyway now the forward foot controls if you're seven feet tall six and a half feet tall that is probably something you are not going to regret but you will regret getting the OEM ones they are only two inches I recommend the free spirits to everybody I have seen plenty of people get the OEM Indian extended reach foot controls and they still end up replacing them because they don't feel they were long enough. Free spirits goes up to 4 inch. Much more effective. I have the 80 millimeters which is like 3.1 inch. I'm only like 5'11 and they're one of my favorite modifications. But again, I got used to the bike as it came from the factory first before I decided that was a thing I wanted to do. Um, rear suspension. Now, I can go either way with this one. Any rear suspension is better than the stock rear suspension. Um, if you build your bike out with the factory Fox shocks, I don't think you're going to find yourself a bright man and want to replace it with something else. All the typical options are pretty similar, I believe, as far as how they function. Floorboards. That's another weird thing. Um, they really change the ergonomics of how you sit on the bike. So if you do not know from experience that you love floorboards, ride your motorcycle with pegs first. Stage one performance intake and exhaust. You will be hard pressed to find somebody with the factory one intake and exhaust that is completely with happy with it and doesn't want to replace it with a real intake and a real exhaust. Um, the absolute only reason I would ever recommend somebody go with the factory stage one intake exhaust and two is if they just want a little bit more performance and they 100% are worried about that warranty. Now I have had zero issues with this motorcycle and I'm near 4,000 miles. Not that that's saying not so much. Not that that's saying much. 4,000 miles is not a lot. bike just clocked over 20,000 miles and has had very little issues. It kind of depends on your dealer. I have a very friendly, a very mod friendly dealer. And I am not 
I'm worried about something going wrong. 100% you will get better performance, sound, looks out of aftermarket performance components. So, unless you are totally worried about your factory warranty, I would never recommend stage one. guys appreciate you watching give me a like if you enjoyed the video don't waste money on parts you don't know you want try to do it right the first time get some experience but i think i'll record this a little bit longer so you can listen to my bike down these beautiful curves until next time this is Jim Bobbington reminding you, don't be a skip like that. Oh, fuck.